This is about how small RNAs and an RNA network might influence inflammation and uh, first the development of inflammation and perhaps also the resolution of inflammation. And uh, it's based on the idea or on the observation that when uh, a cell is suddenly shocked or stressed, uh, it um, and also when there is um, inflammation of a tissue, if you look at those cells, you'll see in them lots and lots of these small allo repeats that are the um, small transposable elements that have a little promoter binding site for an RNA pol 3 and they also uh, um, have this little region that is consistently, you can cut it with an enzyme this alu enzyme. They're called alu repeats because they're just these little repeats of, that, of, of two sort of little pieces, very small RNAs that form these long loops, kind of look like dumbbell shaped. And, um, and nobody quite knows really why there's so many of them, particularly in the human genome. We've got tons, they're everywhere. And, uh, but they're usually quite quiet. But when the cell is stressed, when there's an inf inflammation uh, in the environment, you'll find lots of them. And they're considered to be just trash. They're considered to be uh, a side effect, having nothing whatsoever to do with inflammation itself. And if anything, something the cell should turn off as soon as possible because it could be damaging the genes. If those little things, if those little bits actually not only are expressed, but manage to get themselves inserted into another, uh, another part of the genome, they can randomly jump. Uh, that's considered mutagenic and bad. Um, now, they can't jump on their own. They need their other proteins that are made by other transposable elements, but um, uh, they can also jump, so they can be damaging. Uh, but they are, they are produced in abundance, and, and you have to start wondering why. <laughs> and you have to, it, 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 one of the things I'm looking at now, actually, is to see where are these allo repeats actually uh, conserved. They're all over the place. They're not always conserved, but huge numbers of them are. And, um, and the idea is that maybe they're being released as part of inflammation the, the way uh, heat shock proteins are being released. Um, uh, there are proteins that uh, um, are considered perfectly normal released in, and are doing something functional and important. And perhaps these allo repeats are being released in the same way. Maybe they're a signal for something. Maybe they are participating in, uh, in, um, in a kind of uh, networking of many, many genes, the genes that contain them. Uh, um, and, and part of their structure is to signal that they are a substrate for argonaut, that argonaut will recognize this somewhat common area that they all have, and then take the rest of the molecule and turn it into some kind of um, uh, siRNA, or endo-siRNA in this case. It wouldn't be microRNA, uh, it would be endo-siRNA, endogenous to the cell itself, that's very specific, only shows up during inflammation. And what would the argonaut do when it found such a thing? It would be guided by one half of this this piece of the allo repeat to another allo repeat. And usually what happens, and maybe in what happens in this case, is that that uh, region, the loci that's making that RNA, is basically uh, um, turned off. Transcription is slowed down and turned off in that region. Uh, there's histone modifiers that methylate and slow the nucleosomes, and transcription slows. So in those genes, the introns of those genes, where you have these allo repeats, the transcription is going to be slowed down enormously. You have lots of them all in a row. 
and any kind of RNA Paul II trying to get through those would be slowed down. So you have now a situation where it is um, uh, turning off lots of genes in a row, and that could be extremely useful when you want to shut things down and very specifically ramp up for a stress response.